Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you that you have uh, time to answer a few questions. Yeah. So my first question is, you are part of the IHUB initiative in Kenya. What is the aim of that initiative? Yeah, the IHUB uh, is a community of people who use technology um, for social and economic good. And um, the aim and the mission of the IHUB is to catalyze tech growth and innovation in Nairobi mm -hmm. and in Africa by extension. The IHUB has a membership of over 10,000 uh, uh, different walks of life, but the common um, denominator is that all these people use technology as part of, uh, as a tool um, for social and economic development. Yeah. And in what kinds of technologies do you use? Um, it's different technologies. There is um, a lot of uh, mobile technology in Africa. Nairobi is, Kenya is known indeed for being one of the uh, pioneers of uh, uh, and leading uh, it, actually in the world with mobile technology. Mm -hmm. um, mobile payment, uh, uh, you've heard of, of M-Pesa, which is a, a, a mobile money transfer uh, system that uh, is literally the biggest in the world. And uh, it, 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 it actually um, operates in Kenya. So there's mobile technology, there's web technology, different kinds of technology. Mm -hmm. And we're even looking to move towards uh, hardware prototyping, um, where we can uh, develop hardware. Um, uh, I don't know if you've heard about the brick, for instance, where Ushahidi um, mm -hmm. is, is uh, building um, a modem. Um, that can stay online for over eight hours without power. Uh, given a actual uh, power shortages in Africa, this is a very important uh, piece of hardware and um, it, it could revolutionize um, the use of technology in the region. So um, there's all different kinds of technology. Yeah, in your lab, um, there was the big topic, electoral risk management tools. Yeah, yeah. How is that related to your initiative? Yeah, um, the, the, with regards to elections, um, there is a couple of initiatives by Ushahidi that have been quite notable. The, the tool itself, Ushahidi, um, allows for crisis and uh, crisis mapping. And it has been, it was developed after the uh, election violence in 2007 mm. in response to lack of information and people didn't know what was happening around the country and the mainstream media um, was not showing uh, uh, what was going on. Um, and Ushahidi basically gave the ordinary Kenyan a platform where they could talk about what was t happening to them and around them. And this could be geolocated and mapped and uh, uh, relief organizations, for instance, Red Cross, could use this information to actually go and provide critical relief mm. to people. And um, another tool that's notable is Uchaguzi. Uh, Uchaguzi um, allowed for ca uh, ordinary citizens to actively participate during the election to actually um, report on incidences that was, were happening around them. Uh, it could be uh, incidences of peace, it could be incidences of electoral malpractice, mm -hmm. like bribing voters or intimidating voters, and then this inf or emergencies, and this information would then be processed for action. We have, uh, we have like 42 different tribes in Kenya. Mm -hmm. This information sometimes comes in somebody's own vernacular. It would be translated, and if it is an emergency, then it would be escalated to the right authorities for action. Um, and that was a very, very important tool um, that allowed for proactive action um, to, to uh, prevent incidences like we had seen in 2007 getting out of hand. So um, um, these tools have been made open source. For instance, Ushahidi um, was, was made open source and it's been used in over 150 uh, countries around the world. And it's been translated into 30 language, over 30 languages. And it's been used uh, to map really different, diverse uh, situations, not just elections. For instance, uh, the tsunami in Haiti, um, the earthquake in Japan, um, um, uh, for citizen journalism, where in India, um, the, the Ushahidi was used to highlight sexual harassment uh, amongst women um, during the swine flu outbreak. So it's been used all over the world um, uh, for different uh, purposes. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So how do you think can these kind of initiatives contribute to better democracy, especially in your country? Yeah, I think um, 
one of the most important uh, things that uh, these tools do, like Uchaguzi, is it gives the citizen a voice. It gives them a, a, a platform to, to express themselves and do something about what's going on around them. It is an alternative to violence, because often people will resort to violence. They'll resort to violence if they don't have uh, a way out, how to, uh, to express themselves and trust, uh, uh, trust that some action will be taken. And having an uh, avenue where you could talk about, uh, for instance, an incidence of violence, and then um, the right uh, authorities come and intervene positively, then you can imagine that's such an important tool. Then people feel like they can contribute and participate in society and in a democratic process. And I think that is at the fundamental ethos of democracy is the ability of the average citizen, the, uh, the citizenry to participate. And Uche Guzi gives uh, an opportunity to actively participate beyond the act of just casting the vote, but in monitoring what's going on and in um, uh, during the entire process of uh, the entire elective process. Yeah. Yeah. Where would you see uh, um, the main difference between democracy in Kenya and yeah. democracy in the Western countries, like in Europe? Well, the, the main difference is um, that democracy in Africa in many countries is fairly young and there's a lot of things that um, uh, and uh, democracy as, as a culture is also, uh, it, it is a culture in a way, a culture of, um, uh, it's a process that actually takes a lot of time to mature and you look at the histories of Europe, the history of America, it took a lot of time to mature and uh, in many countries, uh, we just for instance had um, a, di uh, a dictatorship for over 24 years. Um, and we just came out of that. So it's a very young democracy, and we're still uh, uh, maturing as a democracy. And what I've also noticed is a lot of times you'll have uh, cultural nuances that make it uh, different. For instance, you have issues of tribalism, where people make decisions based on the tribe they come from, as opposed to the issues of the day. So that is another element of democracy that needs to mature and needs to change so that people move towards more issue-based uh, politics than political, uh, uh, tribalic politics. So, and we see that changing. And I am happy to say that uh, while we're not there yet, every time um, there is a political discussion, um, the comments I see on TV, for instance, are more and more issue-based as opposed to um, people taking a, uh, a tribalic side. Mm. So there is many differences, uh, social and cultural, um, that affect democracy um, in Europe uh, that, and Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so my final question, what yeah. is your vision of democracy in the future in Kenya? Yeah, I, uh, I think um, I long for the day where uh, in Kenya people uh, embrace fairness, they, em they embrace justice and that people look out for the common good of everyone, not just themselves or their tribe, but uh, look out for the common good of the country and look out for the common good of Africa in general, that uh, the society uh, is one for all and all for one. I think uh, that is utopian, but it's, it is what uh, I hope and wish for. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome.